The young King Tut restored the ancient gods to power two and a half thousand years ago. Their influence continues in our day. The forces behind the throne have not been lost and are as near to you now as the dollar in your wallet. Now, I want to show you how the Great Seal of the United States is very similar to the Necklace of King Tut. What you see on the right side of the screen is the Great Seal of the United States. The upper right has the reverse or back side of the Great Seal, which has the pyramid and the all-seeing eye. And notice that the pyramid has two parts, the base of the pyramid and a triangle floating above it. The lower right has the obverse or front side of the Great Seal with the eagle and shield. On the left side of the screen is Tut's necklace and I want you to notice that these circles form the base of the necklace similar to the Roman numerals forming the base of the pyramid. Also notice the angle that the cobras form on the necklace which are slanting towards the all-seeing eye. Now if I take the pyramid of the Great Seal and overlay it on the necklace, you see that the necklace has a pyramid shape to it, right? The two cobras at the bottom are at the base of the pyramid and the two cobras above are at the base of the triangle. So we do see that the necklace has the reverse of the Great Seal on it. Coincidence or something more? Let's compare the front of the Great Seal to Tut's necklace. Notice that they both have a disc at the very top. They both have the left eye of a bird. Remember that the eye of Horus is the left eye of the hawk. Uh, the necklace has a sky boat. Notice the shape. And on the Great Seal we have a banner roughly in the same shape that says E Plubris Unum. We have a shield over the chest of the bird, just as we have a hard-shelled beetle over the chest of the hawk. We have a bird with upraised wings and a spread tail. And we have uh, a lily and an olive branch, a lotus plant, and arrows. Now let me overlay this, the great seal on the necklace so you can see how nicely they line up. Um, see how the discs line up, the eyes, the shields, the bird, and the two talons. Let me also do it the other way. See how nicely that fits? So let's do a quick review in the similarity between the two. We have discs at the top, we have the left eye, we have a shield, we have a bird with upraised wings and a spread tail, and we have the two talons clutching some items. Coincidence or something more? The number 13 is prominent on the dollar bill. Looking just at the front of the Great Seal, for example, there are 13 stars in the Star of David, 13 letters in E Pluribus Unum, 13 stripes on the shield, 13 leaves on the olive branch, and 13 arrows. Let's compare that to the necklace and see if we could find any examples of the number 13 over here. Let's start with the lotus flower and compare that to the arrows. Here's a close-up of the lotus flower. I want you to notice the three different sections. The center has more leaves on it than the upper and lower sections. So let's count them. We have nine in the center, two above and two below for a total of 13. Just like we have 13 arrows clutched in the same claw of the bird. Secondly, let's look at the number of circles here and compare it to the number of stars in the Star of David. So we have 13 circles as above, so below. Finally, let's take a look at the number of stripes in the shield and compare that to these objects down below. 
Notice that we have six dark stripes and seven light stripes. And on the necklace we have six dark discs and seven of the other objects for a total of 13. So that's some interesting parallels between the two having to do with the number 13. Coincidence or something more. Finally, let's compare the dollar as a whole to King Tut's necklace. We've looked at the four cobras that frame the necklace. On the dollar bill, we have four ones that also form a frame. We have the pyramid with the all-seeing eye above and the bird with a shield, which is also on the great seal of the United States. The shield is a light green, as is the color of the dollar bill. And plants are on both to indicate growth and abundance. At the top, the king is set in a dark disc with two figures on his left and right. On the dollar bill, we have a president also set in a dark disc with the signature of the treasurer on the left and the secretary of treasury on the right. Coincidence or something more? The treasure of King Tut is among us even now. Tut's treasures have been traveling across the United States for the past several years. Its last stop is in Seattle, Washington at the Pacific Science Center. From May 24th, 2012 to January 6, 2013. In conclusion, let's go to the number one King Tut website www.kingtut.org thanks to National Geographic and Northern Trust and listen to what Harrison Ford has to say. Ancient Egypt an amazing civilization in Northern Africa that spanned nearly 3,000 years and still fascinates us today. Its leaders were called pharaohs. This is their story. Pharaoh was supreme on earth, an all-powerful ruler, commander of the armies, and a god in the afterlife. Extraordinary statues, tombs, and riches preserved a pharaoh's legacy for eternity. There was Khafre. His Sphinx and Great Pyramid are among the seven wonders of the ancient world. Akhenaten, his revolutionary religion focused on a single god, the sun god, Aten. Ramses, whose military exploits take center stage in the Bible. Susenes, his magnificent gold and silver treasure survived intact. And Tutankhamun, the boy king, who died mysteriously, leaving a glorious tomb with riches like no other. Now come, travel back in time. See where and how these rulers lived. Then, experience the thrill of British archaeologist Howard Carter when in 1922, he uncovered the astonishing tomb of Tutankhamun, the greatest archaeological discovery of all time. Now, step into the world of Tutankhamun, the golden king and the great pharaohs.